Tonight on Nights of Horror, we have Matt Ryan Tobin. Matt is graphic designer and illustrator hailing from the Great White North. Raised and nurtured lovingly by the hands of the 80s and 90s pop culture, Matt enjoys rye and gingers and one day aspires to become an evil robot version of himself. Matt's clients have included Mondo, Universal, Disney, Fox, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Sony, MGM, Marvel, DC, Lionsgate, A24, IFC Films, Waxwork, Arrow Video, MPI, CBS, Alamo Drafthouse, Fright Rags, B&G, and more. Welcome, Matt Ryan Tobin. Good evening and welcome everyone to Nights of Horror. Tonight my guest is Matt Ryan Tobin. Welcome Matt. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, prolific, I guess, is the word to describe you uh, in the oh. horror genre uh, <laughs> in relationship to poster art and uh, gatefold art. Oh, uh, thank you. you. You've got um, quite a few uh, <laughs> works out there. There's a bit. There's a bit. There's a bit, yeah. Uh, I think you might have the largest relationship with Mondo that I've come across. Oh, yeah? Really? Um, in terms of continuing uh, production, I, th I think you might. I, I have to check on it. But, uh, it's certainly been, yeah, the, the, last, the last couple of years have been, been pretty consistent. Yeah, I've been working with them a lot, I mean, which I'm grateful for. I love, I love them to death. They're, at this point, we've, I've known everyone over at Mondo for, for years, so I consider them know family at this point um where are you located by the way I know you're on the east coast i am in uh how do i explain it for people that know that <laughs> outside where i live um i am let's say an hour and a half west of toronto i'm okay. in a little uh, a small town called grimsby me and my, my my kids and my wife we just moved here actually a year ago got out of the downtown city we wanted okay. some, some, some peace and quiet some some safety and you know get, you know how downtowns can be in most places and it's no different here so yeah so you're actually pretty close to gary pullen then actually well, well gary lives in i don't know if i could say this if he wants me to say where he lives i won't but i will uh <laughs> where i used to live um before this gary and i literally at one point were across almost across the street from each other and then when i moved in with my wife we were, I was just down the street from him. So we're, yeah, pretty close. Uh, that's a try. We had um, a slew of guests who all were in the Seattle area mm -hmm. in the month of October. It was just, there's something spooky going on in Seattle yeah. as well. <laughs> well I mean, we got, it's weird. We have a lot of, um, a lot of, I, I guess I could say, horror centric artists that all live within a close vicinity of each other. Like you have me um gary uh jason edmiston phantom city creative which is justin erickson and Paige reynolds well Paige erickson and um and sarah deck as well and we're all within we're all in the, the gta which is considered the, the greater toronto area so we're all within 40 minutes of each other is there a uh, group project on the horizon oh who knows who knows we actually we just did something um a little while back um it's a great artist and a good friend named uh, Daniel Danger had uh, arranged a sort of a collaboration amongst, I don't know, there must have been like 60 artists or something. There were two different prints. And um, it was it was kind of like to pass the time and do something cool during lockdown. 
and all of us, like all of us, that the Canadian horror crew, we we call ourselves Worst Case Ontario. Um, <laughs> but we, uh, yeah, we all kind of collabed together. We were all part of that project, so that was really cool. That's the uh, lockdown print with the different apartments. Yes, first, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. It turned out great too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I kind of, <laughs> I want to go through your uh, your oeuvre piece <laughs> by piece, if that's okay. Sure thing. Um, I'm going to start with two pieces, or excuse me, uh, yeah, two pieces that are commissions. Um, the first one is your uh, Dusk to Dawn piece. Mm. And I, I, an I don't, yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> <laughs> begin at the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, so how did, how did the commission go about? I know some people don't want their, uh, whomever commissioned them to be revealed. So you don't feel obligated to do that if you don't want it or that person yeah. doesn't want. Yeah. Um, but how did that come well, about? Um, oh man, it's kind of a blur to be honest. Um, yeah, that was definitely early on in, in my, um, in my career designing film posters. Um, but I think um, I was just reached out to by, by, by the commissioner who I, I know who it is, but yeah, I won't mention his name just in case. Um, but um, it's just a simple email, I guess. I know I had done a couple of things at that point for, um, I think it was Hero Complex Gallery I had worked for at that point. So they had really helped me get my, my foot in the door with um, sort of being on the radar, I guess, um, getting my feet wet in, in that world and also bottleneck. So mm -hmm. bottleneck gallery. So at that point I, I had done some work for them and I don't think from Dust to Dawn was the first commission I ever did. I think I did one for, for Die Hard or something a long time ago. And um, I guess it, it just sort of by word of mouth, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, and you know, someone mentioned, hey, do you like Dust from Dust to Dawn? I was like, yes, absolutely. So pretty, so pretty, pretty boring, pretty standard, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have a very weird uh, story about that because I, of course, always liked horror movies. And I I want to say I was 14-ish when that movie came out. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather liked Westerns. So all we knew is there was this Western horror movie. <laughs> and so I saw it sitting next to my grandfather in a movie oh, theater. Oh, that's awesome. That yeah, is that's not, awesome. that is an <laughs> awkward, awkward movie to watch uh sitting next to your grandfather in a movie theater at 14 i don't know i think i think i, I got you talked try watching american pie with your stepmom yeah uh, i mean i've i've <laughs> su I've subsequently had really awkward moments uh <laughs> teaching film you know like uh yeah I'll, I'll get to it in a bit but um you've got uh you have a black swan poster i've used that in class before oh really that's yeah. awesome yeah Thanks. Taught sallow in class before. You know? Oh, so okay. There you I, go. I've, I've definitely had my uh, my awkward moment. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. And of course, you've got society <laughs> too. I've, not, I've yeah. yet to use society in class. I was, <laughs> I was just explaining the ending of it. Juan, the shunting. Oh, the shunt. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I made it like I made it like twenty five minutes into sallow, and a, a friend I was over at a friend's <laughs> house, and I was like, nope. No, I'm good. I, uh, nobody's done a sallow poster yet. Like, <laughs> yeah, I have no. There's a yeah. I don't know. No, I didn't, I <laughs> you're like it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it will not yeah. be a Matt Ryan Tobin poster. <laughs> uh, not even a commission. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, how did you get your start? Like, where where did this come from? Uh, did you go to art school? The the um, usual uh, CV information. It's a. Uh, so it's a bit long, I guess the short end of it would be, um, I was in a band for about my first band for about 11 years, 10 or 11 years. Never would have um, guessed. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had some, some moderate success. We did, we did pretty good. We did okay for ourselves, but, um, what kind of happened was I, I, I've always kind of been a creative person like my whole life. Like I was drawing from the moment I could hold, you know, a, a coloring utensil. Um, but I think what happened was um, uh, somewhere towards the end of high school, I ended up essentially not finishing high school so I could go on tour. Okay. And um, so once I started my music career, I kind of, art kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. Um, and it wasn't until, I'd always dabbled though, 
I'd always dabbled in like Photoshop and, and graphic work and things like that. Um, but more so just, just for fun. Um, but then at one point, you know, when you're an upcoming band, you don't really have a lot of money. Actually, and if you're in a band, you never have any money. But uh, <laughs> so we couldn't really hire anybody to design t-shirts for us. So I was like, well, you know, I, I can figure out how to, you know, set up files for screen printing and whip us up some designs. And then, so I essentially was designing all of our merch. And um, over time, it just kind of snowballed. You know, we'd go on tour with bands and they'd be like, oh, you design merch and you do it cheap, you know, because I didn't know, I was just starting out. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And it just kind of kept going. And eventually I started designing merch for bigger bands, um, you know, as far as like, I don't know, uh, Kill Switch Engage and All That Remains and um, a lot of bigger metal bands. And then we would tour with those bands and then we just kind of keep going like that. Um, but as you can maybe imagine, designing merch for bands can get a little bit, uh, like there's not much creative freedom um, <laughs> a lot of the time, especially dealing with album artwork, you know? Um, and I really wanted to try to do something that I was passionate about rather than trying to create imagery for someone else who had a deeper connection with their music. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, which I can understand. Um, so I, I think it was somewhere around 2008 I don't know how I came across it, but it was, uh, I came across a poster that, that Mondo had released um, for, uh, I think it was the, actually an Alamo Roadshow poster, I believe, um, for the Lost Boys. Okay. And um, it was done by a, an artist who now has since become like one of my closest friends uh, named James Reem Davis. Okay. He did this poster and it was, and Lost Boys is one of my favorite films. So when I don't remember how I came across it, but I saw it and I was like, wow, like, what is this? How do I get this? And, you know, then through some thorough research, I, you know, I tracked down Mondo and, and, and found out all about this whole, this whole movement, I guess, you know, this um, alternative movie posters. And I was just like enamored with it. You know what I mean? And I was like, how do I do this? This is awesome. Cause I love film, film, is something I, I, I've always been deeply in love with and wanted to be involved with my whole life. Um, and you know, just like, just figuring out how to, where, how to get my bearings, how to start, how to get, in, you know, and I, I can be really persistent sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, pitching to every, every, you know, sort of gallery and everything that I could and, um, just trying to work my way up essentially to, to eventually one day work for Mondo. And, um, then one day I got the call. So mission accomplished. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Were you Very always in the every day for it? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Ever since I was a little kid. First horror movie. First horror movie I ever saw was Pet Cemetery. Ah, which yeah. you, you have a piece for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did that. <laughs> and it was that and back to back with Texas Chainsaw 2. Okay. Which you also have a piece for. Yeah. Yeah. Those two back to back. My cousins, my cousins made me watch, watch them when I was super young and they actually uh, locked me inside. It was at like my, my aunt's house or something. And there was like a, like a TV in, in one of the bedrooms and that's where we were watching it. And they actually, during the Zelda scene, which I guess they knew was happening, they locked me in the, <laughs> locked me in the bedroom when it was uh, playing. So it was a little bit, a little bit traumatized, but always, always super scared, but super intrigued at the same time. Okay. You know? Um, Another commission that I, I sort of drool over, which you probably can guess if you look over my shoulder, <laughs> is your Halloween 3 uh, commission. Yeah, I know those masks. Those are awesome. Yep. Yeah, the Halloween 3 one. That's um, another old one, but that's like, that's one that I still, you know, I think a lot of artists have to deal with the fact that when they do something, usually about a week afterwards, they hate it. You know, you, you'd go back, you'd always go back and try to George Lucas it if, if you could, you know what I mean? But um, no one should George Lucas things. <laughs> no, but the desire is there, right? Because you always, once you have time, sometimes to sit back and look at things, you know, tilt your head a little bit. You go, oh, like you know. Um, so I get that. I get that desire to want that. But you know what? That poster actually, I'm, I'm pretty, to this day, still pretty happy with how, how that one turned out. That was a lot of fun. And a it's, different I mean, sort of take. Yeah, it's great. I mean, because you, you see them and. There's several films that I feel like, and I don't know if it's just because I really like those films or, but the, it's really hard to translate them mm -hmm. into a poster. And I feel like Halloween 3 is one of those films because the first, the original poster is quite good with mm -hmm. the, just the um, the silhouette shot that you get really right. briefly from Phoenix, Arizona of the kids wearing the mask. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and if you move beyond that it because that, that is rather iconic like i remember mm-hmm. as a kid like at the movie um rental place like that being one of the posters that was in the window because it is such a striking poster even though the mm-hmm. movie at the time was really you know controversial because it didn't have yeah. michael myers yeah i always um, remembered it as oh that i remember that cover that's the one that i'm not supposed to rent <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I'm obsessed with that movie. Like, no, I, I love, I love the film. I absolutely love Halloween three. Um, I think it's great as its own film, and I think the people couldn't detach themselves from, you know, the first two. It's like that's that's kind of their problem. But as a standalone film, it's it's great. It's awesome. Well, also it's like one of the darkest plots of any it, horror it, film. It is a very dark plot. Yeah. Um, now you did some really cool stuff with it. Like I, I'm a big fan of your typography work. Thank you. In the piece, really, really 80s, uh, mm-hmm. including using the uh, the old television bars uh, mm-hmm. to make the three. Yeah. Um, and then just, uh, you know, you, you dive into an 80s aesthetic sometimes, I feel like. You, you really get uh, drawn toward it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, it's strange because I was born in, in the late 80s, so... But I feel like I was just at the cusp of where, like, if I had been born maybe a year or two later, like, I would have missed the window of being able to grasp a lot of things from the 80s or, or, you know, uh, have the nostalgic value and and appreciation. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I I always like that those pops of color and and, uh, the glowing radiance of, like, 80s film posters and art and, and, and things like that. So, yeah, I'm sure it weasels its way in. Yeah, I mean, even like your, the, the saturation points, as you say, are even very, very 80s. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the layout of the poster is so wonderful because you take the idea of all the television monitors from the uh, Silver Shamrock factory mm-hmm. uh, and, and redeploy them uh, to show basically various scenes from, from the film itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, it creates a really nice uh, visual hierarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, what choice? I, what choices went into it? Like, was the commission more driven by the person who was commissioning it, or was it more? You? Um, I think after I did like that, that was a few commissions in, like down the line. Um, I think after the first couple, um, you kind of realize that you got this whole too many cooks in the kitchen thing going on, and um, it's never good. That's never good. I, I can't think of a time when you've had. 37 people have an opinion on something and then it, and it worked out, you know what I mean? Um, and they each have like a personal desire for what they want something to look like. So with that poster, I, I really, I think that was at least one of the first ones where I was like, okay, if you want to commission me to do this poster, I, I need you to trust me that I'm, I'm going to come up with something that nobody's going to expect, you know, but that's going to work. Cause if it were up to a lot of people, sadly, you know, we, we would get the, the Hollywood portraiture, collage piece you know what i mean yeah the hierarchy with the the kitchen sink poster right and um i'm i'm not so much about that i'm i'm very high i i really like conceptual work and so i really wanted to do a different approach with that movie um so yeah that was that was all me as far as i as i remember um just trying to always and i still to this day just trying to always find um uh another angle to 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 not not an angle necessarily but just something conceptual, something where there's more than what you're just seeing. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's some meaning behind it. There's there's some uh, you know visual metaphor going on. You know, I appreciate you got uh, Connell Cochran in there too, which he, <laughs> he often isn't included in the poster, though he's the villain of the. He's film. the villain. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's an. I mean, I I think the the story is quite interesting. I mean, I like the idea of this like apparently very old male witch yeah <laughs> um they they have a wonderful like almost lovecraftian moment in it in terms of like script writing and mm-hmm. it's basically when he says uh that they show he shows the uh, um the, the piece of stonehenge he's like you wouldn't believe how we got it here and then doesn't tell anybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean there's some there's some oh, good God. humor in that film too you know what i mean and don't forget to watch the big giveaway afterwards why, Cochran? Why? Do I need a reason? Mr. Kupfer was right, you know. I do love a good joke, and this is the best ever. A joke on the children. But there's a better reason. You don't really know much about Halloween. 
You thought no further than the strange custom of having your children wear masks and go out begging for candy. It was the start of the year in our old Celtic lands, and we'd be waiting in our houses of wattles and clay. The barriers would be down, you see, between the real and the unreal. And the dead might be looking in to sit by our fires of turf. Halloween. The festival of Samhain. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red with the blood of animals and children. Sacrifices. The part of our world. Our craft. Witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. It's not so different now. It's time again. In the end, we don't decide these things, you know. The planets do. They're in alignment. And it's time again. The world's going to change tonight, Doctor. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it. And... Happy Halloween. Um, so you, you've mentioned your, uh, relationship with, um, Hero Complex Gallery. How did mm -hmm. that come to be? And can you tell us a little bit about them? Um, you know, actually going back to James Rim Davis, um, him and I started talking because I, I had ordered his Black Christmas poster off his website and it was taking forever to arrive. <laughs> so I emailed him, um, like, a, a, a quite a while later and I was like, Hey man, just, you know, just checking in on this and uh and he's like oh my god i'm so sorry this somehow fell through the cracks and so he ended up shipping me that poster plus like six other posters oh wow um, as compensation i guess and they arrived and i was so um so blown away by by his generosity that i i, I sent him an email and i said hey yeah i really appreciate what you've done you went above and beyond you didn't need to do that you know and um you know hopefully one day i, I would love to have you design some tour art tour poster art for my band so he goes you know well, send me your band. You'll see what I can do. I'm a pretty busy guy, but I'll see what I can do. And uh, so I sent it to him and he ended up becoming a huge fan of my band. And so <laughs> we would do these like merch and, and vinyl CD for, for, for art swaps, you know? And then we, then we would just get on the phone. Eventually we were on the phone. We would just talk for like four hours and we just clicked. Like we were just really became really good friends. And which was great. Cause you know, he's, he, he's one of my favorite artists of all time. And one of the reasons why I fell why I do what I do. Um, so long story short, I, I was talking to him about gallery work and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to get into galleries. I'm pitching everywhere. I, you know, do you have any, you know, maybe tips for me? And he goes, you know, I'll, I'll put in a word with, um, with, um, Adam over at hero complex gallery, you know, I'll get him on, get you on his radar. And, and sure enough, it was like less than a day later, I got an email from Adam and he was just like, Hey man, your work's great. We would love to have you in the gallery. We have a show coming up. Um, we have two shows coming up and, and that was, that was it sort of from there. And then again, I would fly down for the galleries that we would do there and, and became great friends with them, um, with him as well. So I owe a lot to both James and Adam for, uh, you know, for helping me get my start in the business. Um, so a couple of your pieces for them, you did a, a Twin Peaks poster for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that one to me is maybe the most different from the rest of your work. Mm hmm yeah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, how how did you come to your decisions for that? Because also, I mean, yeah, you know, it's very stylistically different. Much like the Halloween three poster is stylistically different mm -hmm. than people would necessarily expect. So, how did you come to the decisions of what you included and didn't include in that poster? Oh, um, ask me to take deep dives into my memory. That's long gone now, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll try. Um, no, I think uh, similar to how I was just kind of getting my footing in, into the industry, I was also trying to find my footing with stylistically how I was going to approach doing poster art and, and, and also the sort of differences 
the different paths you take, whether, whether you're approaching an art print or, an, or a, a film poster. Do you know what I mean? And what, what limitations I wanted to set for myself for either. Um, and when it came to Twin Peaks, um, I had actually um, just, I was very late to the game with Twin Peaks. And I had just finished the series and I was just like, like most Twin Peaks fans, I was just like, oh, like it's all you can think about. It's just on, you know, it's on your brain all day. And I was like, I got to do a piece for this. And at this time there was like, no, I couldn't find any Twin Peaks art, very much of it. There was some, some, some good stuff, but there was like nothing. Um, and so I was like, well, I really want to, I like doing art for stuff that there's not very much art for, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot less to, you know, worry about, not necessarily competing with, but running into, you know, parallel thought and, and things like that and just for fresh ideas. So, you know, I, I was, I've always been a Lynch fan, um, a David Lynch fan. I don't know why it took me so long to watch Twin Peaks though. But uh, with that poster, God, I can't even remember the decision behind it. I think it, it, had, it had something to do with, again, there was a meaning to it with, with Dale um, eventually being stuck in the Red Room, you know, um, the Black like, Lodge. Like the, yeah, the Black Lodge, like the Venus de Milo is there without its limbs, like not being able to, to move. There was, a, there was a whole bunch of like layers of meaning I had put behind it that are so far gone from my brain at this point. Um, but I think it was, it was a lot simpler originally. And then I just kind of was like, well, I'm just going to keep making it crazy and I'm just going to throw any rules at the window. You know, and that's, that's what it ended up as. I mean, I think that's what Lynch does too sometimes. <laughs> you know, there you go. Yeah, well, you see, yeah, that's the thing you set. You're like, here's your, here's your story. And then you're just going to like branch in all these di different directions and make what seem like irrational decisions but visually i just wanted it to look look cool visually at the end of the day uh the next piece i have for you there is a uh, dead alive mm -hmm. which is a little bit more obscure um though you you do have a, a penchant for doing uh, obscure film yeah as well. yeah 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 and, I, and like like i said i think it's because there's a lot there's not a lot of existing art for it you know for a lot of films that i think deserve it um, and it's just fun working on a property that no one's really tackled because you're, it's, it feels like, oh, this is untouched territory. You know, I can, I can have a field day here, you know. <laughs> now, now one that there is quite a bit, and you actually have mentioned it already, uh, that you also did for uh, Hero Complex Gallery was Lost Boys. But mm -hmm. you, again, had a very different take in that you did yeah. sort of a 1950s billboard for uh, Santa Clarita. Mm hmm uh, with, with again the sort of like montage in the typography yeah yeah uh what what decision came to make that that way i suppose well it's the, the opening scene there's the billboard you know welcome to santa yeah. clarita and then santa clarita santa carla sorry and um and then on the reverse side actually i had a plan to do like the reverse print on the back of it as well and have the murder capital of the world there but i just must have forgot or something <laughs> but um and I was just like, you know, that would be, a, again, a, a new take on the Lost Boys. Like, it's not, you know, I don't want to have like the noodles or, or all, all <laughs> sort of like the tropes, you know, or the the cliche pulls from the film. I just wanted to do something that wasn't done before. And the movie's a lot of fun. So I felt like a, a concept like that um, you would definitely complement the film. It's a strange uh, <laughs> film in some ways because, I mean, it starts out a lot more legit horror film then it ends up i feel like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i don't yeah. know if it's the reveal at the end of who the head vampire is that makes it i guess more campy in my mind mm -hmm. than... well i think i think originally from what i know that um when joel schumacher took the film on i think the script was originally intended for it to be very akin to like goonies if the kids were supposed mm -hmm. to be like you know 12 13 like the like the vampires would have been i guess or something like that oh, okay. and then he was like no let's let's make this scarier you know and let's let's hire you know uh let's let's cast um an older cast and make it a like a sort of a romance horror 80s party film you know um so yeah i don't know maybe that's because the the original version of the script was a little bit more campy and and less scary and so maybe some of those elements work their way in still i don't know yeah, because the opening credits to it have like, um, I don't know, a, a more like an angel heart kind of mm -hmm. feel to it than uh, the, the story ends up being. Yeah, with the, the Doors track playing and 
and going through the the city or are you speaking yeah. about like the opening scene where the is it a security guard who gets well, no i'm talking about the credit scene where like you know it's a long almost uh, oh like oh the shot. aerial shot the aerial yeah. shot going over the water yeah 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 you're right yeah like a very martin scorsese kind of mm -hmm, opening mm -hmm. yeah um because those kind of things always make you think it's gonna be much more epic right because that's the point yeah. of doing an opening shot that way yeah a lot more atmospheric a lot of those wide angles make it's, it means to make it uh, atmospheric it's to make it mm -hmm. look larger right so So, I mean, it, it's interesting to me the way that that ends up going, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I mean, it's very, very, very 80s in that way too, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, next, sticking on the theme of vampires, uh, you have Let the Right One In, mm -hmm. which you don't see uh, converted to posters too frequently. No, I, um, I've, seen, I've seen a few in recent years, some really good ones too. At that point... I remember the only one I was really familiar with beforehand was uh, there was one that Tyler Stout had released. It's beautiful. It's still, that's probably, I'm still trying to track down, you know, that, that poster I would love to have in my collection. But, uh, and also before that was one that was done by Phantom City Creative a long time ago. It was uh, just a, but I think it was a small print. I think it was like a, I'm, I'm not sure if it was um, screen printed either, but yeah, same thing. It was just sort of, um, you know, both when you, when you talk about the Let the Right One In and the Dead Alive and Lost Boys, all three of those were part of a show mm -hmm. with Hero Complex Gallery. I think there were two more. Um, and they're like, hey, do you want to do like five posters? And I was like, oh, God. And I was like, okay, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, it's daunting. Um, and I literally just deliberately tried to think of what are posters that no one else is going to do in the show? You know what I mean? Because there are some sort of... Um, some old standbys that I think people tend to gravitate towards. Um, and I just wanted to go left, you know, left field of that. And uh, I, mean, I think Let the Right One is just a, a, a beautifully haunting film um, that, that benefits from, from, from having some nice art to accompany it. The, uh, I mean, so you were familiar with the film, obviously before you decided to do the poster, which is interesting because I mean, as you say, I think the film has entered popular consciousness in the last mm -hmm. like maybe yeah. two years really three years yeah well this i think um, i did that poster before the, the remake came out mm -hmm. i think i think so i think that might have something to do with it the okay. fact that the, it was remade for american audiences true i mean and it's funny because you have an old boy poster too uh <laughs> the same, same kind of like idea of mm -hmm. uh, returning to the original um also i mean you see uh let the right one in now much more commonly on different streaming services i think mm -hmm. i've seen it bounce between shutter and amazon prime uh, yeah in recent years mm -hmm. um it is an interesting story um in terms of like the the various images you can choose you went with the playground scene mm -hmm. or, or sorry, a pastiche of the uh of the, the playground scene at different moments um were there any other moments that were under consideration or was that always the one you wanted to go with you know most of the time when i'm when i'm conjuring up a, a composition for a poster i'm i'm very much about kind of quality of concept over quantity so mm -hmm. I usually get inspired with it with a singular idea and it's kind of hard for me to stray from it because it's it's that initial idea and I always try to go with my first idea because I always feel it's the strongest in the end um so I, I don't I can't recall if there were any other concepts it, it, with with the gallery luckily it was it was kind of carte blanche as as, as far as um composition what I could do you know there were no limitations so once I said the concept over, they're like, yep, that looks great to us. You know, I just, I just wanted to kind of show the, the friendship aspect of it and her, um, 
their Ellie as a, as a protector, you know, um, and have a, a very sort of, I wanted it to feel poetic and, and sweet mm -hmm. and obviously have those dark tones there, but I wanted it and to- blood, And snow picks up blood so well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it, to my mind, there are three other scenes that are really striking in that film. You've got the uh, the protector man pouring acid on his face <laughs> yeah. to, to, to hide his identity in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, you have, of course, the swimming pool scene, mm -hmm. which I think is probably, I mean, it, it, if you watch it, to me, the swimming pool scene is the most interesting to watch filmically. Oh, you yeah. Don't, you don't know what's going on for so long. Three minutes. Passa på att andas. Fem. Fyra. Tre. Två. Ett. No, it is brilliantly shot though. With you, know, you see, you just have that one shot, and it holds for so long. And see, they're like the what is it? The bully's feet being dragged through the water mm -hmm. behind him, and all that. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then you also have the the, the where the the film essentially gets its name from. You have the scene where she enters without permission, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. without being invited. And I mean that that one's very striking. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> blood yeah. pouring out of every pore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is, I, I kind of wanted to steer away from anything. Like the idea of of the blood is obviously there. There's blood in the snow, but I really wanted to um, make it tasteful, as in terms of something you would hang on your wall, and and anybody could kind of hang it in their home um, as an art piece, rather than you know, not like dead alive. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a bit, I wasn't even your grossest poster in horror movie. So. <laughs> I want, but again, anybody who's buying the Dead Alive poster is probably okay with hanging a Dead Alive poster in their, on their wall. But yeah, I just wanted something a little bit more subtle. Okay. Yeah. Um, then also for them, you did your first uh, your, your, your first iteration of Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, this was with the, the repeating knives. Yeah. Uh, but this was a different commission or um showing of this right this was the same show yep same show oh it was the same show okay. yep yep i think actually no but there, uh no you might be right i think that poster was done for a singular show with hero complex but something happened with the with the printing i think or they got damaged a bunch of the posters got damaged in 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 shipping and we were only able to salvage a handful of them um and so we had printed them and it was originally an art print. So there was no billing block or title on it. And um, I think, so what happened when we did that show, I was like, you know what? We only ever popped out a handful of those Halloweens. Do you think it's kosher if we, um, you know, printed, a, printed maybe a second edition? 
And so we decided instead of printing the same thing, again, we would at least add a title and credit block that way it wouldn't be sort of taken away from people who bought the original. So it was essentially a variant, I guess, mm -hmm. um, that was done for that show, but yeah. Okay. But it was nice because I, I got to George Lucas it a bit. I got to, you know, it was like a year later. So I got to kind of go in and finesse it a little bit more the second time around. Uh, so was Black Swan your first Mondo poster? It was. Right. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was my first one. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a an interesting piece. You, you take a lot of the, the elements here and you, you put it really into like the, the, the silhouette of the Prima Ballerina. Mm hmm um in, in terms of what you you did with it it's it's wonderful because it's so distressed in its motion right mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of not graceful <laughs> no no well i mean the idea is having you know her knees bent the opposite way yeah. right like the bird which happens in the film mm -hmm. but again it, like i was saying before at, at first glance you might not catch it you know what i mean and it's one of those things where if you look at it long enough you'll be like oh i see that now there's that sort of what me and gary and, and some other friends call the hook in, in a piece of art, which is just something, you know, beneath the veil, you know, it's, it's, it's the meaning within an image. So it's not just a static image, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that was an interesting project because I, I wasn't necessarily the hugest fan of the film, but, you know, Mona reached out to me to work. So I, I would have said yes to whatever it was, <laughs> you know, at the time. Um, but I do remember there was some, there was some, um, they're, they're, they're some of the most fantastic art directors, by the way, uh, which is worth noting. And, and for my first poster with them, they, they had some like, um, I guess, references in terms of like, the, like, we really like what you did with this poster that you've done before and this, 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 you know, do you think we can work in those kind of avenues? And that was the extent of it. Like, it was very, very vague, but they were, you know, and I was like, absolutely. And, and the, the piece that they referenced was actually from that Hero Complex show, it was a, a poster I did for Blair Witch. And so that, that poster got me the, the model job. There's, there's a funny story behind that poster too, but, um, I've got that with your LP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so they kind of, yeah, they referenced that and, uh, and I was like, well, how's this? And they said, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all? That's there all. There were two of those, correct? There was the white swan and the black swan. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. The variant and the regular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which was the original intent one? Was it the, was the I mean, in your mind, which one was the, I, I don't know, the, the, the prime one? <laughs> I, I think the, good word. Yeah, yeah, the white, the white version was the original. Um, but what I liked about when I had, when I was submitting finals for approval, uh, I had just, I was like, let me make some, try some other ideas so I have some more stuff to show them. And one of them was just putting it on a black background. And what I really liked about the black background is, if you if you look close enough to the poster, you can see that her her like ballerina dress is actually with with her her torso is actually a black swan, mm -hmm. and so when it when you put it against the black background, that really popped through. So when you saw saw it on the white version, you really noticed the legs being bent the opposite way, but on the black version, you noticed the the swan a little bit more, and I just like that that juxtaposition. See, when, when Samalin was on here, I was terrorizing him with the need to do a lenticular poster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like this would be a good one for that, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> just, just to get that, that wonderful scene in the, in the film uh, where, where she is actually turning into mm -hmm. a swan. Yeah. Um, 
And it's interesting because I, 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 your, your production lends to these wonderful transitions because the next piece I want to talk about is Suspiria, which is set in a ballet school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one um, that was like a lot of fun. Cult cinema? Yeah, yeah, cult cinema, yeah, in the UK. Um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And that's that's still kind of like heralded as like, I think one of, one of my, considered one of my better pieces you know, um, uh, yeah, that was, and I think, you know, I watched, when I did that poster, I hadn't even seen Suspiria. Um, I knew of Suspiria, obviously, because you can't, you can't be as, well, at least what I thought, in, ingrained in horror and not at least know Dario Argento. Um, so that was, it was really my, my, um, my entrance also into Giallo films as well. So watching that kind of opened, working on that poster opened up the door into that world, you know, but all I knew is, I knew of Suspiria, I knew some of the imagery and I was like, I know, even though I haven't seen this film and I don't know the entire scope of it, I know that I can pull something really um, conceptual and really striking from it, just from the colors and the saturation alone. I was like, this is gonna be a fun sandbox to play in. You know, it wasn't gonna be limiting and and it worked out and it turned out great. And I yeah, still love that poster. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely di I, another one that's rather different. You know, that one in Twin Peaks, I'd say are the two most different conceptually from what i would think of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, or, or expect now you know the different people like sometimes the poster is completely different <laughs> every time um yeah. and then some people you can look at every time you know and uh, mm -hmm. you know, the rue i could always look at and know it was a deru yeah um, yeah yeah but there there are people who you know the, the style changes quite frequently which mm -hmm. do you prefer do you do you set out to be consistent or do you think you know it's going to be what it is this time um it's kind of hard i guess i guess i don't really think about it like that it's more of like what whatever i lay down on on paper is what i lay down and and just over time you you, you do something enough and you, and you just start being a little bit smoother with it a little like i said you know finessing it a little bit more and um once you get more comfortable like there were certain limitations back when I first started designing in general for screen printing and you weren't allowed, you were very limited in the colors you were allowed to use and what printers could pull off. And so in a lot of ways, if you look at a poster like from Dust Till Dawn, it's a very, the color orientation is very spot color. It's very flat. It's very, there's not much contour or anything like that. And it's because I believe that I didn't know if the printer could do, um, more fine types of printing. It was, it's very, there are very specific printers that can pull off a lot of the sort of painterly stuff that you see. Mm -hmm. um, and so rather than have a print turn out like crap, I, I just would, I would just dial back everything a little bit more. But then once, you know, um, you start working more and more and you work with different companies and printers and things and you're, you can see what's available and, and what you're, you're capable of doing. And that kind of, um, you know, uh, let's go with the reins a little bit on what you're able to do. So I think a lot of it had to do with what I wasn't capable of doing at the time due to also just my own personal um, experience with the medium, but then also, you know, what was capable of actually being printed. Um, so as time goes on, you just, you're like, you add more and a little bit more and a little bit more each time you keep pushing, pushing your own envelope a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't think I've ever, I, I've just tried to make each piece I, do try to be better than the last one. That's that's all I, I try to do, you know. Try not to go backwards if that's, I can, that, if I can that's avoid it. That's a good it. play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next piece uh, I want to talk about is The Witch. And it's interesting because I think you had one of the earlier pieces for The Witch. Uh, a lot more people have done them subsequently, but I think you had uh, mm -hmm. done yours before. And yours was commissioned by A24. Yeah, yeah, for that was a commission by A24 for Hero Complex. Um, yeah, that's that's actually a depressing one. That uh, <laughs> look, looking back, uh, look, like the depressing project, just because I had, I think I, I was on a, another podcast recently, and I think I said I had 24 hours to do it, but I think it was actually 48 hours, which is still a ridiculous amount of time um, to try to conceptualize and execute a, a, a piece of art. But um, yeah, I think I had about 48 hours. Like, hey, do you want to do this poster? Yep. Can you have it? It's Wednesday. Can you have it for Friday? I'm like, yes. And then I regret saying yes right away. <laughs> um, because the, th the reason why it's a little bit depressing is because that was a, a, 
a concept that I didn't have ample time to um, bring my actual vision to fruition. You know what I mean? So it's very, 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 very dialed back as to what it should have been. Um, what should said, it have been? Well, essentially, the shape of Black Philip, the goat, mm -hmm. was, was, how do I explain it? It was essentially going to be sort of silhouetted, but made out of the shapes of, of witches' arms and hands. Okay. So you can kind of, you can kind of get a glimpse into what it would have been as you have the one witch kind of holding him. And his shape is, is just perfectly going over the shoulder and the back. So it's not, so it would be like their arms and stuff would create the shape. So it was a negative uh, space. Exactly. Negative space. Exactly. Um, and, it, and it just would have been a lot more, um, a lot more detailed. And uh, it reminds me it would, of um, Jonathan Burton's Invisible Man posters. Yes. Yes. Beautiful poster, by the way. Jonathan, mm -hmm. he's fantastic. Um, I have a couple of his pieces, actually. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a general idea, but it's just 48 hours, just impossible to get that yeah. done. And I've worked in tight timelines. I have a pretty solid turnaround most of the time, but, uh, yeah. So I've, I've always like regretted that just wishing I could go back. Well, maybe I can yeah. cheer you up on it a little bit. Cause I actually think it's quite good poster because one of the oh, things <laughs> that, uh, that gets often ignored is the weird, um, aspect of non-intimacy. Mm-hmm when people talk about the film mm -hmm. um, because the only sort of hints toward it, obviously the, the mother has a child, like a, a newborn, but you also have the weird sort of like psychosexualization by the daughter toward her father when she's watching him chop wood, which of course is hyper sinful in 17th century <laughs> New England mm -hmm. on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting then to see the, 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 the creation of your piece being this very like almost like tender relationship with the actual representation of the devil that we find out in the yeah ending. yeah so, yeah so i think i think it's good for that reason because it's not something oh, well, people thanks. think about the relationship <laughs> of, the, the, of the film uh usually well i love i love hearing that that interpretation pulled from it and you would say you're, you're pretty bang on too as far as like the, the feeling i was trying to convey you know what i mean is this sort of like it's almost like you know when you think in terms of like if someone were to you know essentially uh sell their soul to the devil or give themselves to the devil it's because you feel like like it's this protector this protector or this like um guardian figure when essentially it's it's not you know what i mean well, because i mean it drew me back to the scene where she's about to sign the book and you get the like, the face of the the goat right of Black Philip, but then at some point, you know, when she says she doesn't know how to write, it's a man's hand and a glove that comes back in. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And so that's where the the poster draws me to is that moment. And I mean, obviously, this is the most famous lines from the film. This is the "What's thou like butter in thy mouth?" And, yeah. Um, which is interesting because, you know, to a contemporary audience, like, yeah, butter, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but but still, uh, rather interesting. But I, I, I mean, I, I think you're too hard on yourself. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, that as is, as is being a, a creative person in general. We're all insecure and overthink everything, so... <laughs> Um, the next uh, cult film, uh, I don't know that The Witch is a cult film. Uh, it's hard to say. It's a um, highbrow horror, whatever they call it yeah. these days. Um, I saw the term recently and I rejected it immediately, whatever <laughs> the official term is, because I thought it was a stupid sound. <laughs> um, it's like it's all horror. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, but this one is definitely a cult following, is uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Now, <laughs> again, uh, kind of a bold choice to take this one on. This, uh, this is one of these ones that's up there with like Cannibal Holocaust of the. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. The red or the orange fire cones are laid out around. Yeah. It and uh, you know. Oh yeah. I, I I came across this originally through Joe Bob Briggs. Um, Love Joe Bob. I, I'm curious how you came. <laughs> across this film and Honestly, how it came I, to be that you did this for plan nine 
I had never, never seen it before. Um, I had seen posters for the film, like, like the original one sheet before, I'm sure somewhere. Um, but when he came to me about it, it's kind of like this, hmm, it's kind of this uh, weird situation where uh, without getting into too much detail, it's, I, had a, I had an existing sort of composition concept for another film, for uh, another company. And it was just not, it was not hitting the mark, I think, for the studio at the time. They weren't, they were just like, no, this isn't working, this isn't working. And I was like, well, you know what, I, I really like this composition and it'd be such a shame if I couldn't use it for something, you know? And um, well, of course, in the original job, it, it was essentially another character completely, but it, it worked, it worked. So when, um, when Plan 9 hit me up to, to do Henry, I literally watched the trailer. Otis, plug it in. Did you really kill your mama? What? Did you really kill your mama? I guess I did. She must have treated you real bad. She was a whore. Susie! Susie! <laughs> You used to dance naked? Sure, all the time around town. Huh? Otis. Best little naked dancer you ever saw. You never. You telling me you never killed anybody before? I ain't saying that. Open your eyes, Otis. Look at the world. It's either you or them. You know what I mean. Do that, Otis. She's your sister. I feel like I know you. Like, like I've known you for a long time. I feel like I've known you forever and ever. It's like the blood droppings from a deer you've shot. And all they gotta do is follow those droppings, and uh, pretty soon they're gonna find that deer. I ain't interrupting this, man. it again <laughs> and i was like <laughs> i was like okay this is I, I i did watch the whole film but just the trailer alone told me okay well this is essentially somewhat of a character study about somebody who's seriously ser has some serious problems um and i was like and this sort of concept can work for this character right off the bat and then i watched the film like like, oh God, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, concept still works, but you know, whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just one of those, this is kind of, kind of a weird situation that things lined up like that. But the idea was essentially already there. I just kind of reworked it for that film. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you did a, a much more conventional, you took on uh, Cronenberg's The Fly for Great Love Mouth, The though. Fly, love The Fly, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's an interest because you, you, you do the like sort of fly eye, uh, design within the poster. Mm -hmm. uh, so you prefer, that's the one you prefer, you're, 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 you're over the original, I suppose. Oh, I, I can tell you, I've never, probably never even seen the, the original, <laughs> the, the Vincent Price version yeah. or, uh, um, yeah, no, that, that poster was a, a lot of fun. Um, I had revisited the fly. Um, and again, the idea just came to me of like, man, this, this film, if you look at any art that's created for this film, it's always a lot of it's the same thing. And I was like, is nobody is nobody grasping the fact that this is a extremely heartbreaking, <laughs> right? Bad romant romantic movie, like because that's what I get from it. I actually get heartache when I'm watching that end scene when he's like, you know, transforming and she she, she still loves him, you know, amidst all the way he looks and and all this. <laughs> And 
was like, that's what I want. I want to, I want to make, I want to make the gone with the wind poster for the fly. (laughs) Right. So that's what it is. (laughs) I'm now thinking about like the, (laughs) there you go. Which of course was reinterpreted in the, uh, the star Wars empire strikes back poster. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah. So that was the idea. And then, but I was like, originally I was just going to have him, I think like mid transformation kissing her, but I was like, it'll, I don't want it to come off like a, you know, a, a trauma poster like you know a toxic avenger type thing right so yeah so i wanted it to the 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 more conceptual aspect would be the showing the evolution of him and how she doesn't change her feelings don't change even though he's changing so yeah that that was that was the the idea behind that and again that's just that's what came to my head when i watched the film again and i was like that's i gotta i gotta execute that somehow okay uh, you then had another Mondo. You had a Jaws poster, which mm-hmm. when I when I think of poster art and um, Jaws, I always think of Mondo. <laughs> but Mondo yeah. does the big thing in Texas where they actually do like the the screen and you out in your inner tube in the water with somebody like attacking mm-hmm. your feet. Yeah, in, in yeah. the summers. Uh, yeah. Yours is a, a close up on Bruce and the sort of like chum, I guess. <laughs> is the bee (laughs) well yeah that one that was the second poster so when i I ever did for them so when i did black swan as soon as it was done i was on the phone with with rob jones their co-founder and and art director and uh he was like all right man you want to do jaws and i'm like yeah (laughs) again just without hesitation and then that was one of those instances where i was like oh there's so much jaws art there's so much jaws art this is going to be tough this is going to be tough so I kind of set these parameters for myself where I was like, there's going to be no boat. Okay. You're not going to actually see the shark. There's going to be no blue or blue on this poster. Yeah, there's definitely no, no blue. You know, unfortunately I had to, I had to show a beach or water in some way, but it's so, it's. Yeah. So like I said, it's just chillest. chum. It's... Yeah. It's like spit rolling over his teeth. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, and again, at first glance, like you don't see the shark right away, you know? So it's, it was just like, I'm just going to go as abstract as I can with this concept and have the teeth be the, the, the change tense on the beach. And, and it's just very subtle down sort of in the bottom mm-hmm. of, of the composition. But uh, yeah, again, just like I said before, just trying to do completely the opposite of anything else I'd ever seen, just to try to avoid any, just to try, try to be as, as, as original as I could to something that is no is no longer original you know yeah i mean i feel like jaws is like the bondo rite of passage mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's it's up there for sure yeah a lot that of and, uh, creature it. from the black lagoon yeah yeah that's what i've yet to do i love i would love to do creature one day um but uh yeah there's, they've done some incredible jaws posters you know three of which were done by one of my good friends justin erickson of phantom city and he just knocks it out of the park every single time he he uses that property you know and he has a, he's he's got a brilliant mind that guy so i, I just got my uh mondo jaws tiki mug i got <laughs> two of them downstairs <laughs> yeah. yeah um yeah it's it, it's it's an interesting piece i mean because you know like you're i feel like of all the movies we've talked about thus far that's the one you're the most limited in terms of like what you can possibly do i'd say that and probably halloween are the most mm it tapped into properties in in the horror world at least like for for posters you know slow ahead i can go slow ahead come on down and chum some of this shit Looks like we're going to need a bigger episode. Tune in next time for part two of our interview with Matt Ryan Tobin. Until then, stay spooky.